Hello everyone. As you know, we talk a great deal about the STEM initiative and we're not the only school that does that. Schools all across the United States speak about the STEM initiative. However, Calhoun City, like with everything else, we're not like everyone because we have to take it a step further. So we don't say STEM so much, STEM so much as we say STEAM. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math. All of those things combined to form our STEAM initiative. And we do a lot of things with that throughout the year. But to get you kicked off, I kind of have a very special guest that I wanted to introduce you to because he has truly taken all the components of what STEAM means and put those together for a very exciting uh, idea. And so I asked if I could share this, and he agreed to. Uh, this is my favorite entrepreneur. This is my oldest nephew, Ty Fricks. Uh, and you, we are dressed in Georgia. We are in Athens, of course, and um, that's kind of where all of this idea was born from. But I'm going to let Ty tell you a little bit about his company, what it does, and where it came from before we start talking about STEAM. So if you could just kind of tell us why, why i -Corps. where did this come from? Um, well, thanks for the opportunity, uh, <laughs> Sissy. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, I had the great opportunity to play football at University of Georgia um, for the last several years and was also a biomedical engineer. And so kind of going through that process, we looked at ways to combine the two. And we played Florida in 2010, and we had one of our athletes that got hit pretty hard and uh, had a pulmonary embolism. It basically just means he had a, uh, a bruise to the lung. Mm -hmm. um, came to the sidelines, started coughing up a little bit of blood. So we hooked him up to a whole lot of monitors. And uh, ends up, he was okay. Everything was fine, mm -hmm. um, so we basically put him back out on the field. The stipulation was he had to come off the field every couple of minutes to get hooked back up to everything to make sure he was still okay. So the problem was we had a star athlete who was okay, mm -hmm. but still had to be off the field. He was uh, missing important was, plays. Exactly, was yeah. missing plays um, just to make sure he was still okay. So that's when a light bulb went off and we said, hey, why don't we monitor him while he's in the game and kind of relay that information to the sidelines so he doesn't miss any plays. So that's pretty much i in a nutshell. We, we, I guess the uh, cheeky way to say it is we want to help bring safety to the forefront of athletics. Excellent. So you were able to combine your background in athletics <coughs> with your degree in engineering as well. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's, let's just start talking about STEAM in itself. S stands for science. So I, I know there's a lot of science involved in this, but if you could tie it up in a, in a minute nutshell, what would you say about science? Well, first of all, I think that's the, the coolest part about this is, is getting to learn all the science behind it. Um, but basically when it comes down to it, it is a, a really cool concept. We, we looked at a bunch of different vital signs that we wanted, wanted to monitor on mm -hmm. our guys, and we basically settled on a couple. And my favorite, probably in particular, is something called blood oxygen saturation. And basically what that means is, is how much oxygen is in your blood versus mm -hmm. how much can your blood actually carry. So we like it to be close to 100%. So your oxygen, the blood has full capacity of oxygen. Um, and in most high-profile athletes, we're almost at 100%. But uh, it's measured in a really cool way. So I'm sure everybody's been to the doctor and had this really weird thing clipped on their finger that shines red light through your finger. So that's a blood oxygen meter. And basically the way it works is, every time your heart beats, your finger gets filled with blood. Yeah. And so your finger gets a little bit bigger and a little bit darker. And so when we shine light through the top of your finger and we test on the back side of your finger how much light makes it through your finger, mm -hmm. every time your heart beats, a little less light makes it through your finger. So that's how we build our graph. Okay. And the graph is basically light intensity over time. So every time your heart beats, we get a dip in the graph. And every time we get a dip in the graph, it's a heartbeat. So if you look at how many times the graph dips per minute, we can tell how many times your heart beats per minute. So you're automatically combining the S for science and the M for math right there together. Right there, and Instantly. math goes you know, way more in depth than that, but that's a, a really good kind of overview of how it works. Okay, what about the technology aspect? So there is a, a whole lot of technology that goes into this, and most of it's very old. Mm -hmm. uh, blood oxygen meters came about in the 1960s, but they measured light that went through your finger and picked it up on the other side. You can't wear that device and play football. Obviously. <laughs> so we realized real quickly that we had to figure a way to get that off the finger. Mm -hmm. And the reason we figured out nobody had done that is because when you take it off the finger and you try to put it other places in the body, light can't go all the way through. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to put it on my wrist, 
I can't shine light through the top of my wrist and pick it up on the bottom of my wrist. Okay. So we have to use a different kind of technology called reflective pulse isometry. So when we shoot through our finger, we call it transmissive because the light is transmitting through the finger. So we use reflective. So basically we bounce light off the finger mm -hmm. and capture it when it comes back. So once we do that, we can move that, that sensor anywhere on the body that there's an artery. Okay. So we can put it on the radial artery right here mm -hmm. and bounce light into the radial artery and pick up how much light comes back. But that's when it gets back to technology because that signal strength is about 2% of the signal strength that you get when you use your finger. And so it's taken 70 years almost for technology to catch up and our sensors to get strong enough to mm -hmm. measure that signal that gets bounced back. So have you found that's held you up a little bit, having to wait on the technology to catch up to your thought process? Um, definitely a little bit, but it, the, the biggest thing is technology is there now. This mm -hmm. is going to happen. Somebody's going to do this. The biggest jump has been um, getting the software to make the technology work. So that's the biggest thing I've learned is you have hardware that does stuff and you have software that does stuff, and right. you have to make the two work together to do what you want it to do. Okay. And so we have the technology and the hardware to do it, but nobody's ever written these software programs to make the hardware work the way we want it to work. Okay. And so that's been the, one of the biggest hurdles we've had to jump. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I think for most people it would probably, it probably makes perfect sense how the science and technology, and obviously you've already been talking engineer, it's been, engineering's been interwoven through all of this, um, as well as the mathematics. I think the thing that, that throws some people for a loop is that there, there is an A in there. There is an oh, artistic yeah. component to this because you built this business, so therefore you had to promote your own business. So how did the artistic part factor in? Well, honestly, I think that's been the most fun part about, about this because I'm no way an, an artsy guy. <laughs> um, I took a pop. So like I was saying before, my dad messed up the camera feed. Um, yes. <laughs> I took a pottery <laughs> class in high school, and that was my only exposure to any form of art, really. Mm -hmm. I think I took a drawing class in middle school, but that was about it. My mm -hmm. mom's a great artist, but I didn't get much of those views. You, um, didn't, you didn't inherit those. I'll, no, I'll, agree, I didn't. I'll agree with that. Yeah. But, uh, but the art part of this was still very interesting to you. Right. It, it's, been, it's been an incredible, incredible um, venture. Um, there's really two sides to the art. Um, one is the engineering itself as an art form, and two is the product development. Um, that's the other side of the art form. But to talk about the engineering a little bit, um, it's like designing 100 highways that are stacked on top of each other, and you have to design in such a way that no car can ever even have a, a little tiny fender bender with another car. Because you're basically building an electron flow um, pathway, highway. And those electrons, those tiny, tiny electrons are what make your product work. Mm -hmm. And if one of them doesn't go in the right place, then your product's going to malfunction. And if you can imagine how hard it is to determine the cause of an accident sometimes, imagine how hard it is to determine when an electron gets off path. I mean, you can't, the Heisenberg principle says you can't know the momentum or the position of the electron at one point ever. Mm -hmm. So you, if you can't know where they are, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. So exactly. it, it goes back to the mechanical engineer being a true artist when he puts that board together and, and kind of makes it work. The other side of that is, is the product design. So once we have a board, we have to get a mechanical engineer to put a casing on the board. Mm -hmm. So think of it like an iPhone. So you have within an iPhone a bunch of guts that are electronics. Right. So that's what we have in our board. Okay. And then you have a really awesome mechanical engineer that comes on and puts the case in the iPhone mm -hmm. that we touch and feel and interact with. And so that would be the case around our electronics. Well, then you have to have somebody come design an otter box mm -hmm. or something like that to protect the mechanical engineer's housing. So we have to do that as well. And basically, ours is going to be like a wristband okay. um, that holds it in place and you have it there. Uh, so our mechanical engineer's piece will actually fit inside this, and that will strap down on the wrist. But those are, those are three different forms of art that we have to come up with. And that's pretty cool, because we've talked about a lot of science and technology so far. And um, to think about all of that fitting into this, to monitor all the different crazy. bottles, that's pretty crazy. So, so if I were a college quarterback, well, I'm a freak, so I guess I would be a deep snapper, correct? <laughs> okay. Uh, just so an athlete, right? We'll just pretend that this fits on my arm, maybe my leg. Uh, 
But this is I'm how this would a little bit big. This a little bit big, but we'll pretend. So this it's, is it's how this would work. Three hundred pound SEC athletes. <laughs> I'm not a three hundred pound SEC athlete. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> but so the whole time they're playing, they're not having to come out and miss important plays right. exactly. to monitor their vitals. They're playing, and this is sending real time information back to the sideline. So if there's a problem, you pull them off at that point. Exactly. Cool. Okay. One last thing I want to talk about really quickly because I know that the kids would really enjoy this. Um, Communications is a major pathway at Calhoun High School. It is. And uh, we start getting kids ready for that middle school. And also, in seventh grade, we have a lot of our math teachers will do a great activity every year that's kind of like um, Shark Tank, where students have to invent something, they have to figure that's out so how to cool. market it. It's so cool, and they take them through the whole process. I wish I would have done that. And I told them last year, I said, my nephew is working on something like this. But uh, 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 one of the fun parts of that, it goes along with the A for Arts, is the marketing process. So you guys have to have something, you know, you can stand and talk all day, but we all know that, that people are visual and they need to see something. So what, how, how did you go about that? Pictures worth a thousand words exactly. and a video so, is worth, I don't know how much. A million. Yeah. So, so how a did you go lot. about the process of, of creating something visual to go along with your product? It, it has been so cool. And before I get into this, um, we basically hired one of the most professional firms in the country that does this stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have a studio that they built out for us. and. And I walked in and I was so blown away. And then a couple months later, I was able to come up to y'all's school and check out your facilities. And they weren't much different. <laughs> it, was, it was incredible how well um, Calhoun exactly. facilities were built out and functioned in comparison to what one of the biggest firms in the country did. It was really cool to see that. But basically, what we did is... I had about 15 of my best friends when I was in college mm -hmm. that all played professionally in their sports. Swimmers, golfers, um, gymnasts. Fo football players, <laughs> Olympian medalists, mm -hmm. gymnasts, Olympian medalists, swimmers. Um, baseball. Baseball, pitcher for the Braves. Um, we had a, a really good group of people. Basically brought them up, put them in a black room, which I know you all have. Up there. Now he knows we have the black box. Exactly. Put them in a black box. <laughs> he paid room. a man to paint his room black, but we have a black box. Twice. Because <laughs> they had to paint it black and then they had to paint it back the original color. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I know, right? So we basically put a bunch of workout stuff in there with them and just filmed them doing what they do, working out. And we got some incredible, incredible footage. But probably the coolest part about that is you have all this footage. And you don't really know what it what it means. Mm -hmm. And to a guy like me looking at it, it's a lot of really cool footage. And then you give it to somebody that is extremely artistic mm -hmm. and knows marketing, and they take hours and hours of footage and cut it into a 59-second segment that is the most incredible, powerful message-sending segment I've ever seen. Really? And then it goes really? beyond that, and you they, they wrote a script, a voiceover, that, that tells our story and tells basically who we are and what we do in a very abstract but really cool way. Mm -hmm. um, and the girl they got, it's, it's a very powerful feminine voice and it perfectly balances all these big powerful male athletes um, that, are, that are in the video. And it's so incredible because so I would have never thought about that compliment. And these guys that, that are true artists, they do and it comes easy. And, they put together one of the most incredible pieces of art I've really seen. And when people, because I know I've shown your marketing commercial to several people, and they always go, I know that voice. I know that uh, voice. Yeah. So, yeah. Where would they know that voice from? Um, well, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's a long story. She actually did a lot of work with the Lord of the Rings. So, um, so when you when you say the marketing commercial, you'll hear that voice, and it will be very familiar to a lot of you. She's really good. So, it, it is a very, it, it's a powerful commercial. It is. It is. It, and the reason she fits so well is, you know, we we're called i and that's a Greek word, and it means Greek blood. mythology. Greek mythology. I was, I was a huge mythology nerd. Uh, Miss Pruitt's mythology this section was awesome. We have in here. Um, but so it, it's Greek, and it means the blood of the gods, mm -hmm. or more specifically, the golden ethereal fluids that pumps through the, the Olympians and the gods' veins. So Mount Olympus is the gods, and that's where we get the Olympics right. from. So it's this perfect combination of athlete, Olympics, mm -hmm. gods, and health. Because blood and athletes kind of pulled together, and that's exactly what we are. We're a combination of basically athletics and healthcare merged into high core. And I, I like the parallel, too, because in the commercial where you hear, 
in the birthplace of the gods in Athens and the birthplace of Icor, Athens, Georgia, right. birthplace of mythology, Athens, Greece. So that's a pretty good parallel there. I know, I know all your English teachers would appreciate that a great deal. One quick question before we close out. If you, had, if, you're, if you were here today talking to middle school students, what one piece of advice would you give them as they look toward their high school career and beyond? Math. <laughs> Learn math. It is um, invaluable. Uh, math, engineering, and especially if you can be a math and an engineer-minded person and bring in the art side of that, the horizons are just completely endless. Um, it is an exploding field. <clears throat> Learn how to program, especially especially if you're good with art. I know a lot of a lot of people out there. You think you're either a computer guy or you're an artist, mm -hmm. and that's just not the case anymore. Um, all our computer guys are having to be artists when they build websites and they do design and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Art is a form, or coding is a form of art. And to build art in a computer, you have to be able to code. So I really think that this generation, the way you're going to get ahead is, is to learn how to program. And if I could go back to sixth or seventh grade, that is the one thing that I would, that I would start doing. Because it is, English is like the business language across the world right now. It's not going to be in the near future. Programming is going to be the language of business in the coming future. That's interesting. That's really cool. Well, I appreciate you doing this for us today, Ty. Make sure you check iCor out. We'll talk a little bit about, more about this as we go. You will be able to see his marketing commercial as well. Uh, but check out iCor. Really cool. There's always wonderful inspiration. I love getting on Instagram and seeing the inspirational pictures and quotes every day. So. I mean, we do a great job with I that. Actually, that. I have to give her a plug. Leslie Boozer is our um, our girl that does that. She mm -hmm. was a runner at Georgia and now runs professionally out in right, Colorado. Right. Um, and, and she does a heck of a job. She does an excellent job. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. And remember, STEAM! Mechanical engineer covers the board. Mm -hmm. So it's like an, an iPhone. The mechanical engineer designs the housing of the iPhone. Okay. So we have to design the housing of our board. Well, what what you holds board it? shrunk down first. Right, we have to have the dimensions mm -hmm. before you can do this. And actually, this is a two way go because we have, in our minds, what we want our board to look like. So we know what we want this guy to design. But he has to work with the electrical engineer to make sure that he lays the board out in the correct way so that he can. So basically, we want the sensors on the bottom. We got to make sure that he can put the sensors on the bottom and he can design for it. Now if we want the barometer on the outside right here, it's just a back and forth here. Once this is done, we go there. This guy designs the iPhone case, basically. So. You know, I'm a hotter box, something like that. So he's designing the wrist strap mm -hmm. that this guy will fit into. We do, it's right there. Yeah, I mean, that's what we But we're going to have to make little changes to this based on the design the mechanical engineer right. gives us. And so that's going to take time. Um, and then we have to get both of these. We have three things for maintaining. Yeah, made them for a lot bigger guys than me. Yeah. 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 What is that which flows through them? These modern gladiators. The elite. The immortal. What is that which causes some to stumble and others to soar? What hidden spark of vitality grants some the intensity, the intelligence, 
the endurance to transcend mortal limits. Does something different course through their veins? Does some strange ember burn in their chests? What flows through them? In Athens, in the birthplace of the athlete, they called it the blood of the gods. They called it Icon.